Welcome everybody, Russ Barkley back again with another short video on a topic related to ADHD. Hey, you're going to meet my new intern working in my studio this week, and that's Johnny back there, as in, here's Johnny. You'll recognize that, of course, not only from the Johnny Carson show, but mainly from the uh, movie by Jack Nicholson, The Shining. So uh, Johnny is here because he's getting ready for next month's National Talk Like a Pirate Day. And so he wants to learn the ropes of the studio, so maybe he'll do a video for us next week. Yeah, that should have been next week, of course. So uh, with that said, let's get started on this topic, which is on the use of extended time for college students with ADHD when they take examinations, particularly high stakes examinations like those needed to get into college and those that may be needed to get onto graduate school or to take specialty boards like the law boards or medical boards and so on. So this study was done a while ago, uh, indeed about 10 years ago, but it has been duplicated by uh, other studies as well. It was done by a couple of friends of mine at Syracuse University, and it actually looked at the, first of all, the rationale for extended time, and then did a comparison of typical students as well as college students with ADHD in taking a standardized test under standard time, time and a half, and double time, and then looked at the results on this particular test, which was a reading comprehension test, to see whether or not extended time was differentially beneficial to the ADHD group. Now, keep in mind, the rationale for giving extended time is based on one of two possibilities. In the case of learning disabilities, such as reading disorders, extended time is being granted because it takes the individual with that disability longer to read, process, and understand the question. And then the thus individual doesn't have access to as many items on the exam as typical students would do. So by giving them extra time, you're kind of balancing things out and trying to level the playing field, letting them have more access to more items in doing so. In the case of ADHD, on the other hand, that's not the rationale. The rationale seems to be that because the exams may require more working memory, uh, executive functioning, self-regulation, uh, and freedom from distraction, that we need to give people with ADHD extra time to level the playing field. In other words, they don't perform as well as typicals when given the exam under standard time, and therefore, by giving them extra time, we allow them equal access to the exam, that is, to equal items of the typical group. But that presumes that people with ADHD don't do as well, don't access as many items on the exam as others do under standard time? That's an interesting question. Because if they do, that is, if they're equivalent to the typicals and how many items they're able to access and respond to, then giving them extra time other than what we give the typical students is actually an advantage. So it doesn't level the playing field. It actually puts them well ahead of typical students in how many items they can go in and answer. So uh, interesting possibilities there. And that's what these authors examined by comparing 38 college students to 38 typical students taking this Nelson Denny reading test of reading comprehension. And so what did they find? The authors found that under standard test conditions, there were no differences between the ADHD college students and the typical college students in how many items they were able to handle, that is to access and respond to on the exam. No differences. So that undermines the rationale for the accommodation right there. And then what they found is that by giving the ADHD students time and a half or even double time, those students were actually able to access 60% to 100% more items on the exam than the typical students did under standard time. In other words, it was a clear advantage to the ADHD group to get that extended time. And by the way, 
It was a clear advantage to the typical students, too, who were also able to, as you could expect, accomplish more items. So in other words, this really isn't an accommodation in order to grant equal access to the exam for those who might be having trouble taking the exam because of their disability. Extended time actually is an advantage over standard time for everyone and therefore could be challenged as an accommodation. As we know, requests for extended time are among the most common accommodations requested by college students with disabilities, particularly those with ADHD. So a very important study there. Now, what I want to do is to show you a more recent review of the literature <clears throat> published just two years ago that went back and reviewed all of the literature on extended time for those with learning disorders and those with ADHD to see what would be best practices. In other words, what should we be granting to students if they are requesting access to the exam with extended time? And the authors of this paper that appeared over in the journal Psychological Inquiry and Law, what they found in reviewing all the literature is that for those with learning disabilities, 25% extra time appeared to be warranted for them and no more, right? So time and a half and double time certainly are not indicated for those with LDs. For those with ADHD, the authors recommend that there is no evidence for this accommodation helping to level the playing field, that it is clearly offering an advantage instead. And they do not recommend the provision of extra time for students with ADHD, uh, or other mental health diagnoses as well. So uh, at this point, it appears to be that at least for ADHD, uh, this should not be a request that one makes. And if they do make it, clinicians who are asked to assess these individuals in college for these accommodations should understand that this is not really an accommodation that helps to level the playing field. It clearly is an advantage. And these authors are recommended that it not be granted. So um, let me hear from you on this if you're interested in responding, but I thought it might be worth looking at now that we're starting the new school year uh, and there's gonna be lots of people who are going to be asking for these accommodations in college or on standardized tests to get into college or graduate school if they have ADHD. So, well, thanks for joining me, everybody. And uh, say hi to Johnny back there again. He'll be back again another time next month. So meanwhile, if you're not a subscriber, as always, think about subscribing. Uh, if you are, but you know other people who might benefit from this channel, please refer them over to the channel for me. And as always, thank you all so much for watching this channel and for your support. So as always, take care and be well.